We'll talk more about these guys uh, as we wrap up and we go through the the betting and we go through the one and done. But let me just hit on uh, a Kyle Porter tweet. So we don't have Kyle with us on this Sunday night, Patrick, but he is in our hearts and on our screens if you're watching on YouTube. And I'll just read you the tweet. It says, quote, it was easy to see that the top players playing the elevated events exclusively would be great for the elevated events. What's interesting is that it might also be a great thing for the non-elevated events. A clear meritoc- uh, meritocratic hierarchy matters in golf, and a splitting of the events into two tiers provides terrific context to the sport. Um, Kyle's been, I mean, he's been prodding this this idea for the last couple of weeks and last couple of months. And I think what it comes down to for me, Patrick, is there's kind of two things that drive interest in sport in general. It's stars. That's not limited to golf. That's football. That's basketball. That's everything. And context. And this is a very strong context week. This is a very strong week of holy crap, somebody's life is going to change or holy crap, this guy Monday queued in or holy crap, 54 days ago, this guy won $1,300 in a mini tour event, right? Like there are ways to frame all of this that I th- I still think get very, very interesting even without 44 of the top 50 in the world. I agree. And it's almost like these past couple of weeks we were spoiled eating filet the whole time with John Rahm and Scotty Scheffler, Max Homa. You kind of have to have like a, a drunken pizza every now and again to to really appreciate it as well, you know? And so it like you factor that in and you also have these guys like messing up down the stretch, which we really haven't seen from, you know, Rom or Scheffler these past couple of weeks. And it's almost like it's not relatable at all, but in a sense you can kind of reach and do the mental gymnastics where it is a little bit more relatable. And like you said, it's completely more life-changing. It means a whole lot more for Chris Kirk to get into the Masters, to nap his first win in eight years, uh, than it does for, you know, John Rahm to get his 10th, even though it it does tie him with Seve. Maybe that was a bad example. But the point kind of still stands where it is life-changing. And Kyle's tweet, I know he's been about it. He kind of, to me, it kind of just like describes the Corn Ferry Tour and the PGA Tour right now. Uh, but I, I agree PGA and PGB tour. Yeah, there were, I, I'm, I like PGA tour plus, but I'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, Greg, it is interesting, right? Because, uh, there were storylines Friday too, right? I mean, we had a couple of guys, we had two guys who were, uh, who went to bed with like a shot or two to play ha- having their cut on the line. It was uh Brett drew I believe who Monday qualified in, right? Like these stories are all over the place and they're, we're getting a little bit better at showcasing them. Yes. And there's, there's meaning. And I think the, uh, the uh, broadcast partners of the PGA tour, both NBC and, and CBS as well do a great job of really providing the bio. Um, you know, the fact that we know that Eric Cole won 54 mini tour events, the fact that we know he's checking his insulin meter down the stretch, um, the fact that we know all that we do about Chris Kirk, right? Th- these things connect, they connect us to the story. They add that context. And all of a sudden it, it becomes relatable, not because you can play shots or, um, or have played similar shots to what they have. It's not because it's not relatable because you have hit an eight iron with water on the right and you know how it feels, but it, it's because you can you can start to imagine uh, yourself in a situation with an opportunity to change your life, uh, with an opportunity to go to the masters, and you can picture what they might be feeling. And it, it has nothing to do with the ability of of play. It has to do with what it's for. And there's a very strong meaning. And again, I turn on this broadcast and I'm watching it and I get the sense that this means something. This feels big and and it's filled with um, it's filled with context. It's filled with meaning. We know that uh, a trip to the Masters is a once in a lifetime opportunity. And there are very many op- there are very many avenues to get there. There are not very many pathways to get there, especially for a 34 year old rookie on the PGA Tour. Uh, and so you can feel with each shot what it what it does for somebody's career. Um, and then you add in on the other side. So, so those stories are one thing where it's the, the life changing story, um, the career, the card keeping stories uh, is one thing. But then there's also the stories of 
well, what does this mean for the FedEx Cup? What does this mean for upcoming majors? Uh, where does so and so stand in official world golf rankings? Where does so where does this stand in relation to past greats like Seve? We have constant in every PGA Tour event. There are constant ties to history, uh, to the season, to the keeping of a job or losing a job. There there are constant connections and constant ties to tangible things that we we know about, uh, and it adds a lot of power. and And it comes through down the stretch when it's it's a tight race and these guys have very nerve wracking shots with a lot of uh, drama on the line. So it, it just, it, it paints a great story. And I, I really felt more than I expected to feel today heading into the Honda classic. I've, I've gotten friendly with a couple of professional golfers out here in Vegas, Mark, who do like the Monday Q circuit. Like it is, it is, it is not easy. It's very difficult. And sometimes I sit here and go, man, like, is this really like, why do you keep putting yourself through this? Like this heartbreak where you got to go out and you got to go shoot like eight under par and you got to, it's just like, it's why do you keep going through this? And then I look at Ryan Gerard Monday qualifies in finishes solo fourth four hundred eleven thousand dollars. He's going to get another start. His life has just changed, and it's like, oh yeah, that's why they keep doing this. Mm -hmm. That's that's so very well said. Um, and Eric Cole is the same sort of thing. Think of all the mini tour events, the slog grind. You know, the evening. I, I guarantee you, lots of tears, lots of times, perhaps that they were close to giving up. But you just stick to it because you believe deep down somehow that you're good enough and all you need is the one chance. And the key is to take that one chance. And we saw some really cool stories where the guys did it this week. Um, for me, you know what? Uh, these stories are more and more compelling. And I'd like to draw a comparison just with Max Homer, for argument's sakes, right? He comes on tour a few years ago, heavily lauded out of college. He was a star when the NCA is, potential star just couldn't find his rear end with two hands for a while there on tour, loses his card, gets it back, loses his card again, goes to the Corn Ferry Tour. What uh, He finished with like three birdies that year on the Corn Ferry Tour to get his PGA Tour card back. So he's basically on by the skin of his teeth. But through it all, he's built a bit of a personality for himself um, with some tweeting and some roasting of people's swings. So people know him. Then all of a sudden, he works in his game. He gets a break. He plays well. Out of the blue, he has a victory at the Wells Fargo event. And look at him now. Now he's talked of in the same circles as the Rory's and the Rams and the Cantlers and stuff. So this is, it's all possible. And, and all these guys have got to find is the one week and maybe the one shot even. And sometimes one shot can be the difference for Eric Cole. Think, think about if he wins, like you guys have documented what happens. So, so it's, it's a slog and it's a grind. And for every one, uh, Ryan Gerard, there is there's thousands of guys that aren't making it and thousands of guys that are struggling. But my hat's off to each and every one of them, because if you have a dream, you work hard, you make sacrifices and stuff and you go after it. I'll, I'll tell you what, there's another one that comes to mind. Yannick Paul, two years ago, Greg, remember this, was playing on the Outlaw Tour, right? We were playing <laughs> yeah. Outlaw Tour DFS with Yannick Paul, and he has won... He's won on the DP World Tour. He finished runner-up again this week. I think it's a second runner-up in his last handful of stars. I mean, it's just, it's crazy. It's crazy yeah. the trajectory that you can get on. Yeah. But, you know, at the same time, when you watch these guys and you see how good they are, it would be hard to imagine quitting knowing how knowing you're that good. Like how, how, how could I be this good and give up and not make it? And, and knowing then on the other side that all these stories are possible and you see some, you see one of your peers, you see Eric Cole go do this and you just beat him in a, you know, in a skins game or in the last mini tour event. And you know, you can play with him and you see that and you say, okay, I, my turn is coming. And, and that's why they put up with the grind because they, they know how close they are. Uh, and it's just, it, you know, the hardest thing is what Mark talked about with Eric Cole, where you play great for 16, 16 holes. And there's a couple holes where you go off the rails when you don't know when that's going to happen uh, and why that happens, figuring that out and getting past that is a really hard thing. And, um, and, and it makes you feel that much closer. So it's, it's a really cool thing. I just, I just love when we get a, a great story 
that does play out. And I know that he, Eric Cole didn't win this week, but um, but but it's still certainly a great story. And and this could be a week that helps him keep his card for sure. 